What's going on everyone? Austin John Place here and today there's a brand new trailer for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl involving some end game content. First of all, I want to say that the game has totally leaked and there are spoilers all over the internet, so if you don't want to be spoiled by anything, uh, it might be a time to, to stop following some people who are covering spoilers and pre-release information. I don't plan on really covering any spoilery information. As far as I've seen, this game is very authentic to the original. So there's not too much to spoil except for the new features. Also want to say now that it has been officially announced that there's going to be, I believe it's a day one patch. Actually, it's a pre-week one patch. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl 1.1 has been announced. This patch will release on November 11th, including communication features, in-game movies, and post-game content. So anyone who has an early copy of the game with their Amazon messed up or whatever other way that they have an early copy of the game, they currently cannot access a lot of content. Actually, I think Pokemon has announced that the game is a full 8 gigabytes of a download, but the current physical cartridge is only about 4 gigabytes, and I think you have to download 4. Which is a double-edged sword, that way, well, you know, they're not gonna prevent any pre-release information from getting out there, but at the same time, you know, you have to have an online connection to do online things and download the online content. That kind of makes sense. There's no opening movie on the title screen, which is weird, and that's obviously going to be in this patch. But the post-game content being locked behind a 4 gig of supposedly 4 gigabyte download, I don't know how I feel about that. I know that there are some people who watch my channel who live in other countries that don't have broadband internet, and a 4 gigabyte download is, that's a hefty download. I know that for a fact. So, it is what it is. Oh yeah, some further details. The 1.1 patch uh, will make it so players will be able to enjoy communication features in the Grand Underground, so you can't do it yet without the patch. The Super Contest Show online stuff. Receive special items via Mystery Gift, okay, and visit Romanus Park after entering the Hall of Fame post-game content. At launch, a maximum of two players, yourself included, will be able to battle and trade Pokemon in the Union Room. A software update will be released in the future that will allow for additional players to join you. In order to download the update, around 3 gigabytes of free space is needed in your console system memory or SD card. Wow. Yeah, it's a 3 gigabyte day one download. Strangely enough, the American version of the video I'm going to be talking about has been removed but the UK version is still online, so let's take a look-see-poo at that. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. This trailer came out this morning, introducing Romanus Park. Hey, that looks like Professor Oak, and you're gonna enter the park, and there's a bunch of different biomes and a weird-looking cave, and the trainer is running around. Legendary Pokemon encounters, that's awesome. Of there we see the beasts and the birds. That's a Rayquaza statue, so we could assume there's going to be the Gen 3 legendaries as well. Find slates to trigger various encounters. We see that a slate is put into the pedestal. Different Pokemon appear based on your game, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Diamond is going to have Ho-Oh and the Gen 2 beasts. Pearl is going to have Lugia and the Gen 1 birds. Link up with other games to befriend mythical Pokemon. If you have save data of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you get a Mew. Save data of Sword and Shield, you get a Jirachi. That's pretty awesome. A lot of information very quickly presented to you right there. In addition, the early purchase bonus, you get the Platinum Style outfit. That just means that you have to be online before February of 2022. And you get a Manaphy Egg via Mystery Gift. And also 12 Quick Balls for the digital only version. Okay, that's, that's that whole thing. Real fast. Speed run. I am going to be getting the Australian copy the day before, and I am going to be putting out some helpful early game videos before I get into the meat and potatoes of everything, including exactly where you have to go and who you have to speak to in order to get those mythical Pokemon. But the simple fact that you're going to be getting three mythical Pokemon that early is pretty big. 
And from what I've seen, it doesn't require you to be much in the game, meaning that if you're a big fan of Mew or Jirachi, if you have the save data from the previous games, you're going to be able to adventure with them throughout the entire game. And I think that's pretty awesome. Special artwork of the Rayquaza statue, that's pretty neat, so we could assume that you're going to be getting access to Di uh, Groudon and Kyogre. We saw the Gen 2 Beasts, we saw the Gen 1 Birds, we saw Lugia and Ho-Oh. We know that Mew's in the game. We just had a Celebi distribution, so I don't know if we're going to be getting Celebi in the game. Uh, Mewtwo will probably be in the game, especially since we saw Professor Oak there. I don't want to disclose any data mining information regarding the Gen 4 Mythicals or other legendary Pokemon in the game, as that may be considered spoilery information. Also, it's incomplete information at this time. That's the biggest, like, if it was complete information, I'd do the little spoiler timer at the bottom and then I would talk to you about it. But all the information right now is incomplete, especially with this being a very large patch that's going to be coming out. Here we have in-game artwork of what's called the Pokemon BDSB Kanto Slate. This is the slate that gives you the three legendary birds from Kanto. And over here we have the Genome Slate. Okay, well apparently Deoxys is gonna be available as well. That's what I can imagine since there's literally a DNA strand on it. Uh, also, we can see that there is the Pokemon Statistrophic Slate, which I now realize is a Game Boy Advance cartridge. And these are Game Boy regular cartridges. That's amazing. And for some reason, we now also have artwork of Mewtwo in game. So we can assume that Mewtwo is going to be available as well. And I'm not exactly too sure where this information has come from, but Serebii has posted that for Pokemon Legends Arceus, which comes out in January, you could get Shaman Land Form and a Kimono in Pokemon Legends Arceus if you have Pokemon Sword and Shield save data. And you get a Pikachu or Eevee mask if you have a Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee save. That's what the hat looks like. Cool. I hate it. The Shaman Kimono's not bad, especially if green's your color. Shout out to my fellow Marauders out there. And uh, yeah, Shaman Landform. Some more information about the Shaman. Trainers who have played Sword and Shield will be able to take a research request in Legends Arceus, which will allow, they'll have a chance to add mythical Pokemon Shaman Landform to their team. They'll also be able to claim the Kimono set. Okay. Oh, also, it's a quest. It's not just given to you. I like that. I like that a lot. The request that allows players to meet Shaman will be available to accept in Jubilee Village after viewing the game's end credits. Okay, so it's post-game content. Players can claim the Kimono after joining the Gal Galaxy Expedition team. Got it. Cerebi states that the slates that allow you to have the mythical or legendary Pokemon show up is obtained through the underground. So we have a full map of Sinnoh, right? Full map of Sinnoh, exactly the same as it was before, or fairly similar to how it was before. And with this fantastic server speed, we can look at the image of the Grand Underground. Please hold. Oh, it froze. Cool. Anyways, we've already covered this, but I was just using this for point of reference, is that it does appear as though the underground areas, while they are very large and interconnected, they are going to be somewhat separated. So we could assume that there are going to be some areas that you cannot transfer between. If you look at this hot area and this grass area and this ice area, there's no connection between them. Do keep in mind this is artwork and not the official in-game screenshots or anything. So the actual layout may be subject to change. If that is the case, we could presume there's areas for the late game underground and that's where you're going to be able to find the slates. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out, right? Right. We'll find out after this 1.1 patch or whatever. <laughs> Well guys, there we go. We are less than two weeks away for the official launch of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl with this patch going live tomorrow, one week before the Australian release date. Are you excited for this game to relive through your memories of Diamond and Pearl exactly with almost no to little platinum content whatsoever? If you're excited to play your game with Mew instead of the $50 paywall of buying the Pokeball Plus, leave a thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.